Hello again. Welcome back. We are going to pick up that star that I forgot real quick. And then uh, continue onward. I like this music. It's, it's, it's good music for this. How they sync it up here is interesting. That's just a nice little bit of polish how they sync up the music like that. Alright, compass. I think in the... When I was re-watching episodes at timestamps, that appeared as a star on the compass, so... Let's go towards that star. Alright, I actually have to go all the way out here first. But yeah, that in the first the first episodes I was still kind of learning the game and I was a bit overwhelmed by things and uh, didn't realize what I was looking at at the time because I only looked at it from behind and I didn't see the uh, the receiver on it. There you go. Now you can clearly see the green receiver on it. All right, so. Where is a nearby puzzle that we could get green from? Let's try this one. Oh yeah, this'll work. Nice and easy. And let's see. Right, everything's already solved. Need red from there. Okay. Uh get the angle to work. Let's do this. Connect. Connect. And Oh, that's sneaky. It's like through a tree. Yeah, look at that. There we go. Yay! Horses are broken, not taught. That is the way of humankind. I think those dialogues happen in the same order, regardless of which order you get the stars in. Because I heard different dialogue orders for the stars when I was watching someone else. Right, where am I going? I need to get out of here. That's uh, in this direction, I think. And I want to drop the star off, and then we'll go to the new stuff. So... Might want to skip ahead if you don't want to see that. <laughs> The music in this game is living in my head, rent-free. <laughs> Such lovely music. Was it this bright and sunny out last time? I don't remember. I'm still wondering about... Oh, what the... That's strange. Huh. Low graphic settings. But yeah, I'm still wondering how the time of day works right now. I don't know if it's based on my real-world time or not. Make a structure, please. You know, it doesn't look like something you could click on as a button, but it is. Oh, and also something else I've noticed, I think, is that, um... The Golden Doors... They aren't based on the Triangle Puzzles. If you solve the Triangle Puzzles first, they don't change. It's actually because there's ten puzzles in each area, and if you solve more than eight, that's what adds to the door. There we go. So yeah, let's check on the Golden Door. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. It says, you know, you need at least eight puzzles to proceed, but then once you do nine and ten, that's when it adds dots to the door. This one might be different, though, because it's in the hub area. 
Oh yeah, this one is different. So I guess we have to do... the golden puzzles in the other areas, and then this one will open. Some people call them pyramid puzzles because, you know, there is the pyramid mega structure, but, uh, yeah. All right. Southern Coast, Verdant Canyon, and Circular Oasis. That's South 1, South 2, and South 3. Let's see, are these numbers all the same problem? Yep. Eight regular, two lost, two stars each. And gold puzzle, gold lab, gold puzzle and lost lab reach. Yep, it's all the same. The heavily eroded cliffs of the southern coast are surrounded by azure waters and dominated by a particularly unusual tower. The Verdant Canyon, a canyon-like formation in the dry, rocky southern region of the island. Its completely enclosed shape suggests it is artificial rather than glacial in origin. Circular Oasis, an artificial oas oasis in the otherwise lifeless desert that stretches across the southwestern portion of the island. Okay, so. Artificial. Suggests it is artificial. And... Unusual tower. So yeah, this was... This relates to when Miranda was talking about the southern area and wanting to bring life back to these areas because they were completely dead. So I'm pretty sure that's what this is about. This is Miranda's attempt at rejuvenating these areas. Well, let's get started. 1K, I'm sending you a little software upgrade I put together that should allow you to detect which files will lead to a data stream overload. Unfortunately, I'm not doing this to help you avoid them. In fact, I'm going to need you to search for more. That was my plan. I'm sorry about that. But if we're going to unlock all the systems that aren't responding, you'll have to connect to the data stream, possibly more than once. It's the only way for me to get access. What a pretty area. Alright, Wonk, In this area, there seems to be a problem with the... the machine that makes the Tetromino bridges. That means you can solve the puzzles, but you can't activate the tower. Look for a lab that lets you connect to the data stream. I already found it. I'll send you the coordinates. Well, look at that. That one's already connected. Curious what new mechanics we'll have in this area. Is there anything I can access from up here before heading down, actually? Does not appear so. We got new music. That's nice. That's puzzle one. Oh, this is interesting. person bending over, holding up the platform. I like this music! What is that connected to? Look at the tower symbol at the top of the compass. That's interesting. The question mark in this direction. Oh, Sphinx!
Hmm. I suppose we won't know what to do with that till later. Is this? Interesting. I wonder what would lower that gate. The question mark up there. Maybe maybe we should just do puzzles in order. I know I normally spend a lot of time exploring stuff, but let's talk to this person and get started in order, I suppose. What is it? short burst of noise on the frequency we used to communicate, but that could have been anything. I see some purple figures in the background here. Now I suspect Byron is still logged in, and his presence has thrown everything out of whack. Entire subsystems are locked down, and everything that depends on those subsystems is disrupted. All right, that's the one phase entry. Oh, it is teleportation. I guess we didn't see the lab for the the duplication. I was wondering about that. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh! Very interesting indeed. <laughs> oh! Wow! This is a. Uh... This is a quiet something. Okay, this is what we were seeing from the other side. I understand now. All oh, right, we need the fan as well. Okay. New interface content available. All right, let's check that out. Noima system. Pretty much all the tech on the island from the puzzles to the make structure is run by a system called Noima. I've identified a number of obvious commonalities with the software we use in New Jerusalem, although it'd be certain that Noima is descended from our software. Right, enough to be certain that Noima is descended from our software, although Athena and Cornelius appear to have upgraded it quite extensively. Noima seems capable of interfacing directly with the user's mind at a deeper level than our own technology, although this functionality is not used consistently. Currently, guest users are locked out of all functions, so only one K can access the system, although he's also locked out of any admin functionality. Oh no! They gave our player character a defined gender. Oh well. Yeah, I think when I was seeing somebody else play that they had an uh, internal monologue that had a male voice. And I didn't get that in my playthrough because apparently it's something you have to do at the start of the game. Teleportation. In some ways, teleportation is one of the less surprising things we found here, in that at least particle teleportation was known to be theoretically possible. Of course, that's still miles away from these teleporters, which operate on principles that simply contradict what we know of physics. The transfer of matter from one location to another is instantaneous, and without an observable wormhole or similar effect. There is, however, a release of exotic particles in the instant of teleportation, which decay within fractions of a second. Right, we still need to figure that out eventually. All right. Very interesting. Hey, 1K, how can I help you? I didn't notice you on the, uh, the VTOL right over here. The southern part of the island is a natural desert. 
basically just due to the chemical composition of the soil. I haven't been able to work out why it's so warm though. It could be a warm ocean current or something to do with the megastructure's thermal output. New Jerusalem doesn't have the kind of equipment I'd need to figure that out. I hope so. I understand why he was impatient, but he should have been more careful. Yeah. All right, let's head up here to two. Puzzle two, cross a bridge. That's a familiar sight from Talos one. The escape. Interesting, in Talos one, uh, this puzzle was the one where you could uh, get the jetpack. The escape, huh? You're, uh, you're placing a lot of hope on these. And us being not being able to swim. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? I think that's a question mark there as well. One of them, maybe. Oh yeah, there's a question mark. It's kind of overlapping with other stuff, though. Kind of, I think. Serene shores. <laughs> the trees will leap here when I zoom in. Low graphic setting this. Let's see. Oh, I need red. Okay. Just barely. I don't know if I can do this. Might not be intended. Ooh. I wonder... Where do we want this exactly? I mean, we can obviously take the driller out. Can we take it through the hole? Yes! Through the hole, through the barrier. Nice. What do we have over here? Kinda difficult to see. Oh, that's a green! Interesting. Okay. What do we want to do with that? Okay, so that kind of works. What do we need to point it at, though? Maybe we need to use it in another puzzle or something? Wait, what? Oh, I saw something for a moment there. What is that? Oh, that must be a source from another puzzle or something. <laughs> uh, okay, well... We'll deal with that later, I suppose. That's where we want to go, right? And we need blue for that. It's easy enough. Oopsie. We can finally go through the driller holes. Nice. Oh, this might be a better vantage point. Oh yeah, I think this is a much better vantage point. Okay. Oopsie. Uh... I'll just put that there for now. And use this ladder. And I can just put this through normally, and then... Teleport in.
I don't know, I thought I saw something over there to connect it with. You know, with the, uh, the dashed line. But I don't know if I can see it from this angle, actually. I don't know what I'm even looking for, to be honest. Because the dashed line goes right through there, doesn't it? Hmm. Well, let's just, uh... Let's just leave that there for the future, I suppose. Here's a question. Oh, whoops. No! No! Ah, that was my fault. Gotta do that again. Yeah, yeah, well... We can at least test it now. Here's what I wanted to test. Okay, cannot teleport in from outside the puzzle. Understood. There it is. Alright. And hopefully that'll be helpful to us somehow. Carefully. Okay. So that's all good now. Let's continue onward, I suppose. I don't think there's a connector in the first puzzle. Lots of question marks on the compass. Oh! Let's try connecting that. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's something at least. Okay, we can definitely climb up here. Ooh, terminal. Okay, we'll do that in a moment. Interesting, we can climb on this stuff. Hopefully they don't let us do that. Not sure if I should be risking this right now. Oh well, let's just read this. Or listen, rather, I suppose. It's an audio log. One day, undoubtedly, an expedition will pass by this island. It will seek to document facts and statistics, to enumerate reasons for us not to look more closely. That is what we do now. We seek facts rather than truth. Because truth might frighten and unsettle the comfortable people who like to sit in their conference rooms and debate which corners we should cut today. These people like to imagine the chaos that could come one day, like a comforting fairy tale of distant darkness. But they do not see the chaos that is at our walls right now, the chaos that also lives within us, a force that is both necessary and appalling. I'm still wondering, we've been finding these audio logs in this guy, it seems like he was also with Athena out here, but nobody else in the game has mentioned it so far. And I don't know why. Right, where are we going? Right, this direction. Okay. Steady. Alright, puzzle three. Through the wall. Oh. Oh.
Screen space reflections! Ah, <laughs> oh, screen space reflections. I mess up though, I wonder. No, I think I think we're on the right track here actually. Yeah, because there's no barrier here. Connectors in this puzzle, so don't need to worry about this anymore. Gotta keep an eye out for secrets. This area seems pretty linearified, though, so kind of gotta go with the flow if we want to explore. Although not too too quickly, because I, I don't want to reset my green laser setup. There's definitely a question mark over here. Is this a lost puzzle? What is this? Okay, I think this is a triangle puzzle. Yeah, yeah, I changed on the compass already. Here we go. Triangle puzzle, premier puzzle of minimalism. Jammer. Interesting. How do you jump out of the air, though? <laughs> like, we have- we have air control in this game, and no thrusters. Like, they specifically said we don't have jetpacks, so how do we have air control? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so that's something we could teleport or swap through. Or take control through, rather. <laughs> uh, if this can't fit through the gap, then how am I going to take it through the gap? Oh. Hmm. I guess those can't go on fans without a box. Makes sense. Most other elements can't. Hmm. I guess we want it on the button then? That'd be my guess. We can't... Oh, we can! Ooh, interesting. Well, I think we know what we're doing now. Yep. I think we gotta do... Ah, uh, I guess we can't do that right now. I'll put that there just in case. Anyways, come back for later, right? Or maybe I want it in here. I don't know. Ah, let's do it in here, because we won't be able to... If I take the jammer, we won't be able to jam this anymore, so... Or I guess I could jam it up from there, but, you know. Ooh, wait a minute. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Okay. Pick me up, please. Yeah, we gotta do this in a certain order. There we go. Gotta do this first. Uh, let's put it there. That'll work. There we go. We want anything else? Just need a fan, I guess.
There we go. <laughs> it just opens it just enough to press this button, which does what exactly? I guess we can get back up here, so... Oh, an accumulator! What was that doing? What does that turn on? Oh, it opens that, okay. We need that, though? Wait, why doesn't that work? Okay... Interesting. Okay... So it does need to go... Where exactly? How does this work gonna work? I guess right here-ish? It turned off, so we know that works. Where do we take it, though? I already forgot. There, okay. That makes easy things. Meh, makes things easy, then. I think I kind of fell through the grating there, but that's okay. Yay! Did it! I don't see anything else in this direction on the compass, but we can still check over here just in case there's you know, something a couple like that. Years back, we went on a scavenging expedition to an ancient industrial complex south of New Jerusalem. It was enormous, sprawling, an area many times bigger than our whole city, just dedicated to manufacturing. It was incredible to think about the sheer variety of things they produced. And it made me realize how austere, how restricted our lives are. You know how most ancient structures are overgrown? It's kind of pretty, but in a sad way? Well, this one wasn't. There had been some kind of chemical spill. I don't know if it happened while the structure was still operational, or if something had just rotted through, but it killed everything. Even centuries later, nothing could grow. It didn't have to happen that way, and history doesn't have to repeat itself. But we do have to remember that it did happen once. Yakut's got a good mind on things. We have of late been told much about what the citizen owes the city. Loyalty, obedience, gratitude. And I will not argue with those who say that without some loyalty to a greater good, a man is little more than a savage. And I will even say that these days there are more savages amongst us than amongst the barbarians, who we call savages out of ignorance and arrogance. But there is another question that we are rarely encouraged to ask. What does the city owe the citizen? What must it offer to earn loyalty, obedience and gratitude? And if, as we have said, a city is a kind of machine, should a machine that does not fulfill its purpose perhaps be repaired or replaced? Yes, indeed. In the early days, humankind lived in a world of unexplained wonders and terrors. The powers of the elements were understood in terms of gods and spirits. After all, how else could one explain thunderstorms and earthquakes? But as the realm of scientific knowledge expanded, the realm of the mystical began to shrink. The sacred grove, as Hegel wrote, was reduced to mere timber. But as superstition retreated, another thing was lost. Meaning. In a purely mechanical universe, people yearned for the comfort provided by gods and spirits. But there was no way back. But what about the beauty of the universe? The perfection of everything around us, couldn't they see that? Not sure I can see that, Miranda. But I do think there was another way. A way forward instead of back. Faith not in an invisible world, but in ourselves. In each other. In the inherent value of consciousness and civilization. They never really found it. But I think that in those last months when their whole species was dying. They caught a glimpse of it. And that's how your mother was born. 
I don't know if we've been there. We might have. I don't remember. Pushing through. Puzzle 4. Alright. Is there... Hmm. But what is inside or outside? Also, where did that drip come from? I guess we're kind of under a wettish structure. Yeah, there's there's drips every now and then. I don't like the drip sounds personally. Alright, well let's just see what's in here, I suppose. Should I take the connector with me is the thing. Probably. Oh maybe not. Uh oh. That might have been a mistake. Oh, there it is! Okay. But we still have a chance. Alright. How does this help us? I guess we need this over here, right? Take the connector out, but then we'll be trapped. No, because... Duh, it's out there. Duh, don't need this room anymore. Don't need that room anymore, I don't think. Yeah, no, it was just a box. Yeah, we can't teleport through a barrier. Nothing in here for us. I guess we just need to take the connector then, or something like that. But how? Because as soon as I pick this up, yeah, nothing I can do about that. And obviously we can't do that. Hmm... We see over the wall, I wonder. Eh, not really. What am I missing here? <laughs> That's an interesting interaction there. How does this help us? Yeah, I'm not seeing how that helps us. What am I misunderstanding here? Right click works on it, but doesn't change the behavior, I don't think. Uh, let's try this again, maybe.
Interesting. Yep, can't teleport like that either. Do we need this at all? I don't think so. Yeah, there's nothing really in there for us. What? Goodbye, bitrate. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing because they put it in the wall here, maybe? Yeah. Probably didn't want to have me overlap the wall. Pushing through. That's what this is called, right? Yeah. I just don't see what to do here. Like, we can't push boxes. Not without a fan, anyway. See how teleporting helps us when we can't teleport through a barrier. Uh hmm. Yeah, I still can't still can't. Still can't teleport to that. What am I missing? Can't power it from this side. See the green connector from here? I think so. Guess I'll be relevant much later. I'm not supposed to put, like, this, put this on a ledge or something, am I? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Understanding about this. Why is that there? I don't understand that. Like, how does that. I guess it's just we can't power it from outside? Yes, yeah, so we had to teleport in? Yeah, okay. Might have to come back to this one, I suppose. It's just not making sense to me. 
Sorry. Let's, let's go work on another one. There's a question... Is there a question mark in this direction? No. Is this a shortcut back? Maybe? Uh, no, this is just the other side. Interesting. I don't think that helps us, though. We certainly can't drop in from above, right? It's all under under stuff. Yeah. Left to right. Just barely can't get up there. City by the sea. When I realized it was over, it was all really over for good, I decided to take one last trip to my favorite places before the symptoms got too much. I can never forgive what they did to Chalkadiki, this incredible wild rugged place between mountain and sea, with pine trees all the way down to the water. Colors, the vistas, the sheer overwhelming beauty of it all. And they just built all over it. Hideous hotels sprawling like tumors. Obscene beach bars blowing their awful music across the sea. Even in cover trapes. I don't know what that is. I guess it maybe it's a location name. It was impossible not to hate humanity a little for it. The idea of all of it returning to nature, of the hotels gradually sinking back into the reed fields, was moving and beautiful. But then I went back to Thessaloniki, and for all the ugliness inflicted upon that city, the idea that people would no longer meet up beneath the Camara, or go for long ambling walks on the promenade, or for creep or crepes on the Plataea Nevarinu was unbearably sad. The idea of the rotunda just standing there empty after being a sacred place for so many centuries will make me remember that it's not just beaches and forests that are beautiful, that cities can be more than this than just streets and noise. Cities can have histories and personalities, and that means something. Who am I writing this for? Do I believe there will be survivors after all? Do I think that crazy robot project I heard about will actually work out? Do I hope that aliens will come to our planet one day and wonder who we were? The truth is that I don't know. But there is something in the love we feel for the beautiful things that we built. As much as in our revulsion towards unnecessary destruction, that matters. Miranda says, Why didn't our ancestors understand that you can build in ways that make an area more beautiful instead of ruining it? Even if all they cared about was personal benefit, wouldn't that benefit them more? Neo says, in the long run, yes. But people rarely think about the long-term consequences, especially if there's an incentive to act immediately. Miranda replies, And yet most of them were unhappy with the results. Couldn't they see that it was in their control to act differently? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Problem solving. From LD Armin's, can you point me in the direction of a better timeline? Uh, this is titled, Solving the Wrong Problem. Humans are problem solvers is a quote frequently associated with my friend Alexander Drennan. It's become a meme on the internet, used both ironically and not. Though Alexander, of course, is entirely earnest in her dedication to humanity. It's a great thought and vital to understanding our species. But it's also not entirely as simple as that. 
Take, for example, the recent extinction of the orangutan and the ensuing conversation about the dangers of unknown pathogens released by human activity. Most of us agree that a problem exists, and significantly, most of us believe that something ought to be done about it. So we've identified the problem, and we've collectively decided to act. So why is nothing happening? That's a serious question. A great deal of effort is expended on raising awareness, but I would like to suggest that sometimes our problem-solving impulses can get stuck on the wrong results, or on the wrong goals. Awareness is not the issue. We've already convinced people that something needs to change. So if nothing changes, we have to wonder, why is the will of the people not being translated into action? Text missing from archive. And, uh... About Alexandra, she's also capable of being devastatingly sarcastic, but that's another story for another book. Miranda says, Maybe the problem was that they didn't have enough hope. They could see the problems, but they couldn't imagine that one day those problems could be solved. Athena. It's easy for people to get so lost in the problems of the present that they think nothing will ever change. Cornelius. They lost hope because the historical circumstances they found themselves in encouraged despair, but that in turn meant the conditions could not change. How do you go against history itself? Founding 7, from Hypatia's Journal number 7. From Volume 1, The Founding of New Jerusalem, Day 372. Yemo died today. One moment he was there, wielding a joint on the upper levels of the tower, and the next he was gone. One careless step, that's all it took. Athena brought him to the dam, but even Cornelius couldn't help. Yemo is gone. Now there's only 12 of us. I think about Yemo every day, says Athena. Cornelius says, so do I. Athena says, you did nothing wrong, you weren't even there, I was. I wonder what that did this exactly. This is a design for an improved charging station. Fascinating, but not relevant. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, I guess that's all that's over here. Onward we shall continue. Puzzle 5, Dyad. Hmm. You know, I think it might be good to solve this one in the next episode. Thank you for watching.